fanboy. Noun. A male fan. I am a male. Especially one who is obsessive about comics, music, movies, or science fiction. I guess by that definition, I'm not one. Verb. Uh, to behave in an obsessive or overexcited way. Not typically that either. Hmm. Guess that means I'm not technically a Gibson fanboy. I bought my first Les Paul, and we are going to discuss probably the most important thing. Is it worth whatever it costs in 2023 to buy a real Gibson Les Paul? I'm going to give you my thoughts on the quality of the guitar, and uh, most of all, just tell you what I think about owning a new Les Paul. I've never had a Les Paul before. This is the first one, so I'm pretty excited. Mm -hmm. This is a slash November burst Les Paul. So let's get the first thing out of the way. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I ordered this particular guitar, why I didn't just get a regular Les Paul standard, uh, why I would have spent the extra money because I think a new Les Paul standard at the time of making this video is $27.99. This guitar was actually $31.99. Uh, I'll tell you a little story about it. My wife is a massive massive Slash fan. And so, I mean, this goes all the way back to her childhood, Appetite for Destruction, the whole thing, and her favorite song of all time, if you just like erased all other songs on the planet, is November Rain. And so when we were at Sweetwater a couple of years ago, um, we were trying out guitars. It was actually when I discovered the PRS Fiore. Uh, it was that same day. She saw this. And she said, this thing is beautiful. First of all, it's gorgeous. Second of all, uh, if you get a Les Paul, because I know you're going to buy one at some point, this was her talking, uh, that you should get that one because it's it's cool. And, you know, the whole November rain connection and everything. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I really wanted a gold top really bad. And I was like, I suppose I could just buy the Slash gold top instead of this. But she really liked it. I really liked it. Um, and so I kind of set my sights on it. I've been wanting one for a couple of years. So let's talk features wise, uh, why I bought the Slash uh, Les Paul and not just a, a Les Paul standard. Mostly because I really wanted the truss rod cover to say Slash, that's really why, I'm just kidding. Um, the neck profile, number one reason. The number one reason why is the neck profile. I really, 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 really like it. I like, I want a gold top, but I don't like that big 50s fat neck profile. This. Uh, feels a little bit different than that one. Um, some specs say this is the 50s one, but you play them side by side and I don't think they're the same. Um, I just really, really like this particular neck profile. 
The color obviously is beautiful. I will tell you, I hate cream. And for some reason on this guitar, I absolutely love it. I think it looks fantastic. Um, the other reason is some of the hardware appointments are kind of a cut above the regular Les Paul standard uh, as far as the bridge and the, the tailpiece. Um, it's got orange drop caps in it already, which I don't remember what the standards do anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. I just like this particular guitar. The other big, 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 big reason is because uh, it has Alnico 2 pickups in it. And I we just came out with the Dylan Tox Tone Thruxton Alnico 2 pickups, which were really inspired by these pickups and by the whole slash sound, only it's kind of my spin on it. And so I wanted to have a set of these as well. And so for a few reasons, I decided to get the Slash Les Paul. And I really, really love this. <laughs> Is it to the point of all-out obsession? Probably not, because uh, I have a bunch of guitars for a bunch of different reasons. And I just realized the other day, I have a bunch of signature guitars now, which is sort of weird, because I'm not that guy. But when the feature set says, get this guitar, I get this guitar. That's kind of just how it goes. Um, I really, really like this thing. So uh, let's talk Gibson. I'm sure there's a few of you in the comments already saying you could just get an Epiphone and put your stuff in it. Well, there's a few things that you don't get with an Epiphone. First of all, you don't get an actual maple top. You get a laminate. And as a result of that, the carve is actually a little bit different. If you look at a laminate maple top, it does not have the same carve on most of them. On most of them, not all of them, but I'm just, the ones that I have seen, because I have had a few, um, have just a different, shaped top. The other thing is, is nitrocellulose lacquer. Uh, there is something about the smell of a Gibson that is just bomb, and I really, really like it. This is not a tonal thing. Wood doesn't breathe. The guitar is dead. It is a dead piece of wood. So I'm not going to get into all that black voodoo magic stuff, but I like a nitrocellulose finish, and I will keep this guitar a very long time, and I want it to age properly. I have two other Gibsons with nitrocellulose finishes, and I want them to age properly as well. And so I'm I'm not saying I'm not careful with them, but I want them to age. I really, really like that. I like it when the nickel ages, I like, and you don't get that with a Epiphone. I know that Gibson uh, Epiphone, the Epiphone Pro Buckers are good pickups, some say. Personally, I don't like them. And so I really want the actual Gibson pickups. Now, are we gonna put my pickups in this guitar at some point? Yes, absolutely, because that happens with most of the stuff that I own. But I want the original Gibson pickups. I want actual Gibson pickups, which you can't really, I'm not saying you can't get them in an Epiphone, but most of them have those Pro Buckers, and they're okay, but they're not, they're not Gibson pickups. They don't sound the same. Uh, this guitar does not sound like an Epiphone. It sounds like a Gibson. There is just a thing that it does, and it just does it. And to be honest with you, it's cool. I think it's cool. This this is the guitar. There's a thing about aspirations 
with an instrument. You could say, I have a particular guitar and it's just as good as another guitar. Well, guess what? This is the guitar that all those other guitars are trying to be just as good as. Uh, the same thing happens with like cars. You know, there's a bunch of cars that uh, are trying to be as good as a Porsche 911, for example. They're just not because they are not actually that thing. This is actually that thing. And I wanted to have the actual thing. Will I have more Epiphone Les Pauls in the future and do build videos on them and do all those things? Absolutely 100%. Yes, 100% I will. But I wanted to have the, abs the actual thing. Okay, let's talk about quality. Uh, this guitar in 2023, 2022, 2023 is 100% fantastic except for one little thing. Uh, it has no quality control issues at all with the finish. It has no quality controls issues with the electronics, no quality control issues with the fretboard, with chatter marks, with machine marks, with finish on the binding, with binding, uh, no, no, none of those issues. None of the issues that people say that you have with these guitars, this has none of them. Um, it's perfect except for one thing. The only thing that I could find going over this really, really, really with a fine tooth comb is the little pointy pointer for the uh, bridge position volume knob is loose. So I need to take this knob off, tighten up that nut so that that little pointy pointer doesn't spin around and scratch up the finish. That's the only little thing that I found quality wise with this instrument. Everything else was 100% dead on perfect. Um, the other thing with the slash one I should mention is what comes in the case other than the guitar. Well, first of all, the bag says Gibson on it, duh. And what we've got in here, we've got a polishing cloth, Gibson logoed polishing cloth. We got an owner's manual so that you can learn exactly how to play like slash. Uh, we've got a pick guard because the guitar doesn't have a pick guard on it with the hardware, but if you put this on, you have to drill the holes because the holes are not in the guitar. Personally, I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, some slash picks, which is pretty cool. Uh, a non-slash truss rod cover in case you don't wanna have Slash's name on there, but I mean, I think it's cool, so I'm gonna leave it. Uh, and then a Gibson tool that uh, has the truss rod wrench and all the stuff on it and it's labeled Gibson on the side, branded Gibson. Uh, and then the other thing that was in there that you don't see here is there were strap locks because the guitar comes with strap locks. I already put them on the strap so I wouldn't drop the guitar when I was playing it today. And then of course it comes with a strap, which I won't use because it's not my style, but there's a strap there. And then it comes with the warranty information. And then, remember when Budweiser used to do the born on date? They kind of do the same thing. They take a picture of whenever the guitar was done. My other Gibson has this too. Actually, both my other Gibsons have this. Um, I don't know why. I, maybe it just makes you feel cool about when your guitar was built. But there you go. That's also in the case as well. So uh, the question, is a Gibson worth buying in 2023? Here's the thing, in 2023, a good American guitar, so whether that be a Tele, a Strat, a Les Paul, an SG, anything like that, um, is approaching $2,000 for the high-end version. You add to that uh, a maple cap, binding, carved top, humbuckers, uh, inlays, you add a bound neck, all those things and you do pretty much if for those of you that know what it takes to actually do this work um, it's pretty much there when you get to a $2,700 instrument um, now when you have a $2,700 or $2,800 whatever the yeah $2,799 I think is what a standard cost this is $3,199 artist premium is typically four to $600 something like that. So now we get up into the 3199 range. Did I pay 
to have an artist's name on my guitar. Yes, let's just say it. Yes, I did. I paid a little extra. Is that okay with me? Absolutely, because of the story, because of the connection with this guitar, because of I want a Les Paul, but I also have this connection to Slash. My wife really loves this guitar. Um, all those things, it kind of just comes into play with the entire thing. So does that mean that this guitar is worth it in 2023? For me, absolutely yes. Is it gonna be worth it for you? Probably not, maybe not, maybe yes. Maybe you're beating down the door to go get one or maybe you're gonna go get a standard or a gold top or something else. But uh, for an American made feature rich guitar, 25 to $2,700 is pretty run of the mill these days. Whether we want to spend that or whether we're willing to spend that, that's another story, but that's just kind of where it's at. Then you add that artist premium, bam, now you're $31.99. I think it's 100% worth it. Gibson in particular is really worth it. I think there are other major brands right now that have kind of fallen off and have kind of switched places with Gibson. And I really feel like Gibson's quality, their uh, attention to detail is fantastic. I guess my takeaway from this entire thing is, do not fall prey to whatever people say about things on the internet. Uh, just buy the guitar. If you want it, buy it. If you think it's cool, buy it. If you can afford it, obviously. Um, buy the guitar. If it inspires you to play, then it is worth it. This inspires me, so it is worth it. Uh, I love everything about it. If it didn't, it would go back in the box and I would return it and get something else. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't have been worth it, but it is because it inspires me. Um, does it have to have a particular number of features and does it have to have dollars per weight of you know features that it has that guitar is not worth that much money? Not to me. I look at it at dollars per smile. If this thing is gonna make me smile a bunch, then it's worth whatever I paid for it. There you go. Just a little different way to think about stuff these days in the 2023s. Thanks for hanging out and letting me share with you the story of my first Les Paul. I am really excited about it. I'm not over excited and I'm not over enthusiastic because I am just as excited about pretty much all of those guitars out there. That's why I own them. But this thing is really special and I really, really like it. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Do all the things you normally do. I'll put a link to this and a bunch of the stuff that we used in the video. We used the Gibson, we used the Maestro Delay, we used the Black Star amp, uh, the drive side of it, and the clean side of it. Uh, I'll leave a link to all that stuff and the cable and everything in the description below. If you use those links, it helps out the channel quite a bit. And if you want to directly support Dylan Talks Tone, you can share this video and go to dylantalkstone.com and buy some pickups because that's what we really do. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you on Monday.